think of white girl wasted, sleazy pop party girl anthems of the 2000s, no artist's name springs to my mind faster than Kesha. I do everything that a rock star does. I just happen to have a really sweet pair of tits. You like it? Awesome, you don't change the channel. Kesha, back when she had a dollar sign in place of the S in her name, blew up on the pop charts back in 2010 with hit singles such as TikTok and We Are Who We Are, songs which quickly became a phenomenon in mainstream music and looking back, ended up marking their place as a real genuinely historic moment in pop culture history. Well, one of the things I like, my favorite tidbit reading about you last night was when TikTok went to number one for nine weeks on the chart, only female recording artist who went longer than that was 10 weeks. That was Debbie Boone with You Light Up My Life. I never thought I was going to mention your name and Debbie Boone in the same sentence. I totally share that sentiment. <laughs> Kesha as a person had an outgoing, attention-grabbing personality and a warm, fun, comforting aura. And her persona during this time was that of a fun-loving, hippy-dippy, beer-swilling, rock-and-roll party-goer. You know, that silly, excited, carefree, yet kind of dangerous girl at the party with, like, messy hair and glitter all over her face, who drinks you under the table effortlessly with a camel crush always in hand, she captured the hearts of many. Uh, so, what is party the words for the night. Cash, you want to go eat? We're buying. Do yeah, I want to? No, I'm not hungry. You're not boys. hungry? Thank All you, right. though. Okay. I appreciate that. In-N-Out Burger? In-N-Out Burger? In -Out I like that ring. Who is the biggest of all y'all, huh? I do. <laughs> Can you want to whip them out for me? Yeah, here you go. Let me there see. Is. All right, here we go. This is like a f***ing buffet table. Of <laughs> <laughs> That was good. After her debut full-length album entitled Animal was released on January 1st of 2010, it was off to the races of mainstream stardom for Kesha. Don't stop, make it pop, DJ Bonus. Now, while Kesha still maintains her career and releases great music to this day, her most recent album High Road having been released in 2020, she's been through many ups and downs and trials and tribulations along the way. It's been very well documented over the past several years, her relationship with mega pop producer and songwriter Dr. Luke. With 21 number one singles to his credit, he is 37-year-old producer and songwriter Lukash Gottwald, the man everyone calls Dr. Luke, the most successful and sought-after hitmaker in pop music today. A man who signed Kesha to his record label in 2005 when she was 18 years old. A man who Kesha filed a lawsuit against in 2014, suing him for sex assault and battery, sex harassment, gender violence, emotional abuse violation of California business practices which had occurred over 10 years of working together. Now, the legal battle between Kesha and Dr. Luke remains ongoing, and Dr. Luke remains a prominent figure in the pop music world to this day. I mean, Doja Cat is currently signed to his record label. He works with people like Kim Petras, you know, he's still in the game. And, uh, you know, all of that is a whole other can of worms, but either way, you know, it can be kind of hard sometimes to look back on Kesha's career and not simultaneously think of the dark cloud cast by Dr. Luke's mistreatment of her over it. And it also adds, you know, kind of a bit of a mysterious darkness and sadness when thinking back on Kesha's carefree, fun, party girl persona during this time. That being said, in today's video, in this video, we're not we're not going to be focusing on the Dr. Luke lawsuit or anything like that. Instead, we'll be focusing on Kesha's rise as a musician, her transformation into a unique pop icon, and the cultural impact her music made, specifically in the year 2010, when her first album, Animal, as well as its follow-up counterpart EP, Cannibal, were released. Hello, my friends, it's me, the Cozy Representative, and today we're going to be taking a look back and we're going to be finding out exactly how Kesha became a pop party girl phenomenon.
But first, I just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of these lovely people who support this channel on Patreon. Thank you guys so, so much. Um, if you're interested in supporting this channel and keeping the lights on over here, and if you want to get some fun bonus content and things like that, uh, you can head to the description of this video and sign up for one of the monthly tiers uh, for my Patreon. It's a big help. And thank you again to anybody and everybody who is signed up for it right now. Y'all are the real MVP. And with that, onwards to the Kesha story. Let's go. Welcome best-selling author and Broadway composer, Cindy Lauper. She's a global superstar. And one of the reasons why pop made a big resurgence this year and it's my privilege to introduce this female performer singing one of her hottest songs this year, Kesha! So, it would be remiss to get into the early days of Kesha's career without first starting off with where it all began, essentially, which was Kesha's mother, a woman named Rosemary Patricia Sebert, otherwise known by her nickname, PB. Back in the 70s, PB was married to an American country singer named Hugh Moffat, and together they wrote a song for another American country singer named Joe Sun, a song called Old Flames Can't Hold a Candle to You. At the time, the song reached number 14 on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart in 1978, and a couple years later in 1980, the song became an even bigger hit when it was covered by the one and only Dolly Parton on her 1980 album Dolly 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 where it reached number freaking one on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. And off of that momentum, P.B. Sebert worked as a songwriter for many years and eventually her daughter Kesha Rose Sebert was born in 1987. In the 90s, when Kesha was a child, her mother PB heard her singing voice and encouraged her to sing after noticing that she had some natural talent, and PB also started teaching Kesha how to write songs after she would come home from school. And Kesha also began taking songwriting classes when she was in high school. When Kesha was 16 years old, her and her mom co-wrote a song together called Steven, which years later would eventually appear on Kesha's debut album Animal. I think that's very cute. Kind of a funny little tidbit from around this time. In 2005, when Kesha was 18 years old, her, her mother, as well as her sibling, Lagan, appeared in an episode of the reality TV show The Simple Life, which starred Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. What? <laughs> In an episode called The Wedding Planner, uh, Paris and Nicole stay at PB's house while they attempt to plan a wedding, and with Kesha's help, they actually try to set PB up on a date. Pretty funny. My name is PB. I'm a single mom with three kids in Nashville, Tennessee. All the kids play music. We all meditate. We're, I guess, what you'd call free spirits. You have to be really nice to the girls when they're here. Hey, we don't even know them. I think Paris and Nicole will fit in with our family really well. After settling into their new room, the girls get to know single mom PB. My love life has been non-existent for a while. I would go out, except I never meet anybody that interests me. Hmm. Do you ever get lonely? Yeah, but you girls could probably find me a better guy than I could find for myself, because you guys are really We're hot. Good at that. <laughs> he can't be a dumbass. Okay, smart. <laughs> can't live in his car. <laughs> That's a good quality. Hi, sexy. His name is Rob. Are you a cowboy? No, I'm an investment banker, actually. Do you like to dance? I gotta save a horse, ride a cowboy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if this was your mom, though. 
I'm gonna vomit. So, around this time in 2005, when Kesha was 18, Kesha showed interest in starting a real singing career of her own, and she started working on demos of her songs. One of her demos was actually heard by big-time pop producer Max Martin, who had worked with artists like Britney Spears and the Backstreet Boys and Celine Dion, and he was impressed with Kesha. I think he might have ended up, you know, he heard this demo uh, probably due to Kesha's mom's, you know, in uh, connections with, uh, you know, the 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 world of mainstream songwriting and whatnot. When Kesha was seventeen, Max Martin convinced her to drop out of high school and move to Los Angeles to pursue a music career, which she did, and she did earn her. GED after the fact. A year later, in 2005, like I was saying, when she was 18, she was discovered by a man named Dr. Luke, you know, uh, and signed to his record label, which is called Chemo Sabi Records, which is owned by Sony. So in the five year time space between Kesha's signing to a label in 2005 and the release of her debut album Animal in 2010, Kesha was actively working with uh, you know a plethora of different producers and songwriters, putting together lots of different songs and ultimately further developing herself and finding herself as an artist in preparation of putting together a debut album. There was also some contractual management and label complications during this time, which kind of hindered the process of releasing her album as well. Uh, and during this time, Kesha worked as a waitress. I've been doing music since I was like forever because I can't do anything else. Like I tried to be a waitress, I just got fired, it was awful. I can't do anything else, so I decided one day I'm just gonna do it till it works. So I've been doing it since I was like 15. But um, it's finally kind of working, so it's really cool. Like, I've been sneaking into shows and, like, backstage and trying to get on stage for the past 15 years. And now I'm actually, like, my name's on the bill, so I feel like I'm, like, psyched on it. Kesha's real first big break came in 2009. Uh, as the story goes, rapper Flo Rida was in the studio working on his song called Right Round. And Flo Rida was like, man... This song's cool, but you know what it needs? You know what the last little cherry on top that this song needs? Some female vocals. I walked in the studio after I got done playing dodgeball, and there was Flo Rida on the couch at my producer's studio, and he was like, oh, there should be like a girl singing this part, and it's about like, fellatio, I'm pretty sure the song's about it, and I was like, woo, let me do it. And so I just went in and did it, and I was kind of just fucking around, and then they were like, oh, you sound great. And they kept it. Ended up doing another song with Blue Rider too, because of that. He liked it so much. Boom! There was Kesha on Right Round by Flo Rida, which you guys know, that song ended up becoming a gigantically huge mainstream hit at the time. Huge song. I don't think a lot of people know that you actually co-wrote Till the World Ends. Yeah, I wrote that song for Britney. Like, I sat down with her in mind and tried to put my brain into her brain and make, you know, what I think I do best is just like a dance anthem. But I really wanted... It's be very Britney. I've been writing songs since I was 13. My mom's a songwriter. Writing just is in my blood. And I consider myself a writer first. Um, and I've also written um, a song for Miley Cyrus and the Veronica. So Britney wasn't the first, but she's obviously an icon. So kind of a big deal. It's kind of the best thing ever. And that leads us into the next phase of Kesha's career, where shit really popped off her debut solo album, Animal. In November of 2009, Kesha's official MySpace page, myspace.com slash Kesha is hot, read the following, quote, the time has come to get rowdy motherfuckers. I'm a bit of a stalker. I love South and boys and boots and boners and beer and Babes, balloons, barbecue sauce, big balls, bonfires, babes, boobs, butts, Bonnie Raitt, blowjobs, bad tattoos. Mm-hmm. I sometimes wish I was a man. I would have the sickest trash stash. I've worked with a lot of hot bitches. I live in Laurel Canyon in a treehouse slash castle hybrid. Mick Jagger might be my dad for reals. I play the cowbell. Anyways, music is rad. I hope 
If you're fucking rad, then let's party. Killing it, got a bullet with your name on it. After years of honing her craft and a feature on a hit Flo Rida song under her belt, Kesha was ready. I mean, Kesha was born ready, am I right? But now, she was readier than ready. She was hungry, she was prepared. It was her moment, it was her time to be unleashed into the world. And on New Year's Day, January 1st of 2010, Kesha's first official debut full-length studio album entitled Animal was released via RCA Records and Sony Music, an album many years in the making, which Kesha had written over 200 songs in the years leading up to the album. The finished product, Animal, was whittled down to 14 strong attention-grabbing songs. Kesha worked with a variety of different producers and co-writers for the songs on Animal, namely Dr. Luke and Max Martin, among many others. Kesha herself does have writing credits on every single song, though, as well as production credits on the album as a whole. Musically, Kesha's Animal is a totally juiced up, energetic, sleazy, glitter-soaked, beer-stained, glam rock-inspired dance party of a pop album. While the music itself is almost entirely electronic, synthesizer, booty-shaken, MDMA, pop and dance pop, Kesha's unique personality shines through on every song, and her carefree, fun, rock and roll spirit is what makes the these songs really sparkle and what makes them distinct and ultimately what makes them hit in my eyes. With lyrics like my steez is gonna be affected if I keep it up like a lovesick crackhead or just turn around boy let me hit that. Don't be a little bitch with your chit chat. Just show me where your dick's at. Kesha reminded us all that in life there's fun to be had. You can be goofy. You can be your true unfiltered unapologetic self and that's okay. You can be celebrated. You can be loved for just being you. You don't have to worry, you know, about what everyone else thinks. You get what I'm saying, you know? Be yourself. Have fun. That was her message, in my eyes. Is there really a sleazy side to Kesha, or is that image versus reality? What you see is what you get. Can girl rock stars, girl pop stars, can they really be sleazy, or is there a double standard? You know, you There's see absolutely these, yeah. a double standard. I think that, you know, if I go out and sleep with one person or multiple people, if I were a man, that'd be badass. As a woman, you're called a slut. I really do feel like it's my personal mission. I was put here to kind of level the playing field. The record kicks off uh, with actually another song which Kesha co-wrote with her mom, which I think is the sweetest thing ever. The song, Your Love Is My Drug, a fun, upbeat, lovesick, summertime pop track what a fun chorus on this one uh you know the whole spirit of kesha is in this song this song takes me right the fuck back to you know the summer of 2010 man what a nostalgia blast on this one it reminds me of middle school you know puberty girls wearing silly bands and shit no we write uh, together a lot Elles écrivent ensemble. Wow. we wrote um animal it's one of my favorite songs I've ever written. We wrote that together. We also wrote Your Love Is My Drug together and um, a song called Cannibal, which is about me dismembering and eating a member of the opposite sex. Isn't it really weird to write stuff like that with your mom? No. No? She's just as <laughs> mental as I am. <laughs> The song Take It Off has always been one of my favorites on the album. A real late night getting wasted in the club banger. A song for anyone who's ever left the house on a Friday night with, you know, a water bottle full of straight whiskey in hand. I've definitely been there. One big... <laughs> highlight on this album for me uh has always been the song that she did with 303 blah 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 um this one's more of a horny drunk club banger <laughs> and this one always to me felt like kind of an ode to the myspace scene at the time i mean obviously it has 303 on it but it's also like i feel like this song could easily be a song by the warp tour scene party crew the millionaires who also existed around the same time it's kind of like the closest thing that kesha got to um you know a millionaire's song 
You know, Kesha's got a little crunk core going on on blah, 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 maybe edging into that territory. The song Hung Over uh, shows a different, deeper, and more emotional side to Kesha. Somewhat of a somber ballad. My personal number one favorite song on Animal, however, is easily, easily the song Backstabber. Come on. My God, this song is so fucking cool. This shit is such a vibe. This song, it like... It sounds so, it sounds like the future, you know, still to this day, it sounds futuristic and just banging and such a vibe. It's, you know, it's funny, this song, Backstabber, it wasn't really that big of a song at the time. It wasn't a single, it wasn't a hit, it was kind of a deep cut on the album, not super well known. I, uh, but now, you know, it's in Kesha's, like, top five songs on Spotify, which is crazy. I think it's had somewhat of a resurgence on TikTok, as a lot of songs do these days, you know, and now it's kind of like, it, you know, if you just look at the plays on Spotify, it looks like a big hit from this album, but it really wasn't at the time. But the youth has revived it. Thank you, the youth, for reviving Backstabber by Kesha, because this song is fucking awesome. It's well-deserved. Anyways, Animal, the whole album, is fucking sick. I could sit here all day and just talk about how amazing this album is. All the songs, just top quality. Such a such a fun spirit in this album, you know? And at this point, total pop classic, really captured a specific moment of culture. The album's lead single, TikTok, which is not to be confused with the the app TikTok. This was this was before that. This was the original TikTok. Uh, <laughs> another incredible track, obviously. Uh, some facts about this one. It was released prior to the release of the whole album. It was put out on August 7th of 2009. And I mean, you guys know this song absolutely blew up pretty instantly. It was a smash. It pretty quickly became Kesha's flagship song, her first big hit on her own, possibly her biggest hit to this day, just super successful. Um, and a song which much like this album and Kesha in general during this time and, you know, late 2009, early 2010. TikTok was a song which really captured that specific moment in pop culture, you know, the tail end of the MySpace era, the tail end of the 2000s decade. Um, you know, again, the song makes me think of silly bands and like old school Shane Dawson and the annoying orange, all that just smosh, you know, that, that whole, that whole time period, that, that era of like the internet. <laughs> From its attention grabbing, why didn't I think of that opening line, wake up in the morning, feel Feeling like P. Diddy to now the party don't start till I walk in. Not only was Kesha creating her own vibe, but the overall song's unique, infectious nature made it a hit. And at this point in 2022, looking back, this song specifically, TikTok, had really cemented its place as a timeless, classic, iconic, mainstream pop hit. Uh, again, a true moment in pop culture. The song entered the Billboard Hot 100 in October of 2009, initially at number 79, but it quickly climbed the chart and became the first number one single of the 2010s decade. And believe it or not, TikTok stayed at number one for nine consecutive weeks. That's a long time. And in December of 2009, the song actually broke the record for the highest single week sale sales uh, of a single song by a female artist in the United States selling 610,000 digital downloads in one week. And interestingly enough, the number one spot for highest single week sales of a single at the time belonged to, believe it or not, Right Round by Flo Rida featuring Kesha. How about that? Anyways, the album itself, Animal, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 when it came out in January of 2010 with sales of 152,000 copies. Absolutely huge right off the bat. It went platinum later that year with over 1 million copies sold and by December of 2018 the record is now triple platinum with over 3 million copies sold. Go Kesha! The album's second single Blah 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 featuring 303 debuted on the Billboard Hot 100 at number 7 in February of 2010. The song Your Love Is My Drug was released to radio as a single on April 20th of 2010, The Weed Day. A nice big summer single hitting number 1 
one on the Billboard pop chart in June of 2010. It was Kesha Mania in 2010. Shit was going crazy. The song Take It Off was released as a single in July of 2010, and it became a, another top 10 single. She couldn't stop with the top 10 singles. believe it guys keeping the Kesha explosion hype train rolling Kesha released an EP on November 19th of 2010 which was called Cannibal and Cannibal is kind of like a miniature companion piece to Animal so to speak it was originally going to be released as a deluxe edition of Animal with new songs added but it ended up being released as its own standalone EP just with the new songs on it it's kind of like how Lady Gaga had the fame and then the fame monster this was Kesha's the fame monster cannibal cannibal was another big success more great pop songs on this one it peaked at number 15 on the billboard 200 and the EP's lead single we are who we are another great classic fucking you know uh era defining single um, again just a great song too uh was yet another number one hit for kesha debuted at number one on the billboard hot 100 in 2011 kesha set out on her own headlining tour to support animal and cannibal which was called the get sleazy tour with a few different opening acts and various legs of the tour including 303 and lmfao and my god man look at that set list nothing but bangers i'm very excited actually because my show is very much unlike any other pop show i've ever seen it's not very planned and it's not very perfect it's actually very wild <laughs> and um i have cross dressers and i have a dancing penis and it's just <laughs> kind of <laughs> craziness so i think that the fans of rock music will actually appreciate my show because it is pop music but we're fucking crazy so before i end this video the last thing I want to really touch on and hammer home is Kesha's general cultural impact in the bigger picture of pop culture and what the era of her debut album, Animal and Cannibal as well, brought to the table in the pop world at the time and what its legacy is looking back on it now. So in the bigger picture of pop music at the time in the, you know, sort of the 2009-2010 era, I wouldn't say that Kesha was like like the number one defining pop artist of the era i would say that maybe lady gaga gets that title and you know even like Katy perry was maybe in a league above kesha but kesha did have an extremely huge cultural moment and a very meaningful one too because the way i see it probably the most important and maybe the most meaningful factor of kesha's impact was her personality, her big personality, her warm, fun, comforting vibe as a human, which seeped through always in her songs, as well as her, you know, rock and roll, kind of punk rock, fuck you, I'm gonna do what I want no matter what and be as freaky as possible because it's who I am vibe, which really seeped through her music as well. That was a big part of Kesha. Kesha always had great songs, you know, her songs were incredible, but her vibe and her spirit and her unapologetically unique personality were what really made her shine and caused her to have a big, memorable impact. You know, I think that a lot of pops, you know, pop artists, you know, from this time, a lot of them, uh, you know, have that message of be yourself and, 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 and do you and, and, you know, all that be authentic. But there was something about the way Kesha presented it that hits home for me a little bit more and is a little bit more like feels a little bit more genuine and heartfelt and personable and and real than like someone like Katy Perry. You know what I mean? You know, and Kesha had, you know, the genuine spirit of punk rock and classic rock and roll first and foremost, despite being a pop singer. Also, I wanted to say, you know, I, I've touched a bit in this video and even in like the video title about Kesha having a very brazen, you know, kind of party girl, drunken, 
you know, beer swilling image and persona. But I think it's important to note that her hard partying image wasn't that of a dark, negative, toxic one. You know what I mean? At least the way I see it. Uh, it was strictly all about having fun and being yourself. It was all about being true to yourself and living authentically. It was a positive spin on it. You know, I think when any artist takes on the hard partying, I drink a lot persona, it can often come off as a dangerous kind of toxic, bad influence kind of thing. And I think that's a whole other can of worms, but I think the way that Kesha did it, the way that she embodied it was clearly way more about living authentically and being your own unique self and embracing yourself as opposed to like actually encouraging kids to drink whiskey out of water bottles or whatever. You know what I mean? And all that being said, that's basically where I'm going to leave this video off on. You know, Kesha still maintains a, a pretty great career, I would say, to this day. She has millions of loving, adoring fans all over the world. After the era of, you know, Animal and Cannibal, she put out her second album, her second full length called Warrior in 2012, which I feel like didn't really do as well as Animal, but it was still a big album. It had that hit Die Young on it, which was a big song after that. That record, uh, you know, the whole, uh, you know, her lawsuit against Dr. Luke happened and, and, and that kind of was a whole process for her and is still a whole process for her. And since then, she's kind of come back in recent years. She put out a kind of a, uh, sort of a, maybe you could call it a comeback album called Rainbow in 2017 and then had another one, High Road in 2020. And she's just doing her thing, man, still making great music and, you know, I, I've got nothing but love and respect, all the love and respect for in the world for Kesha. You know, I, her first album is still my favorite one personally. I listened to it a lot at the time. It really like, you know, um, I was kind of a kid who was more involved in the alternative music scene and, and whatnot. But Kesha was like a mainstream kind of pop artist that I could really like unironically for real get behind and really loved her music and her vibe, you know, and still to this day, her first album animal brings me a lot of happiness and a lot of nostalgia and a lot of just, you know, it still encourages me to, to have fun and be myself to this day. And I think that's what it does for, for anybody who connects with this album and this era of Kesha. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been the cozy representative. Uh, please subscribe and like the video. If you liked this, um, if not, Thanks for watching. <laughs> I appreciate it. I hope you'll stick around for more. I got a lot of fun stuff coming up in the future. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great night. I'll see you next time. Peace out.